Hello learners, welcome back to Cash Education and today we are going to look at the mechanism of intron splicing. Introns are the non-coding intervening type of sequences found between exons which are expressed sequences. Because they are non-coding in nature, introns must be excised from an mRNA before it is translated into a protein. The type of intron and the splicing mechanism that we are going to study today is for the GUAG type of introns. This is a representation of a pre-mRNA that is containing the GUAG type of intron. This intron is flanked by exon 1 and exon 2 at the 5' dash and 3' dash end respectively. At the 5' prime end of the intron, you have the GU sequence. At the 3' prime end of the intron, we have the AG sequence. That is why this intron is called as the GUAG type of intron. Upstream to the 3' prime AG sequence, there is a branch point adenine. This branch point adenine plays a crucial role in the excision of the intron from the pre-mRNA. The excision or splicing of the GUAG intron requires the participation of special proteins called SNRFs small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. These proteins are made up of RNA as well as an associate protein. The SNRFs that participate in GUAG in transplicing are U1, U2, U4, U6 and U5. In the first step, the U1 SNRF recognizes the GU sequence and binds to it at the 5' prime end. This is followed by the binding of U2 SNRP at the branch point adenine which is upstream of the AG sequence. This is followed by the complexing of U4 and U6. And then the two of them together complex with U5. This complex must then attach to the U2 SNRP and bring together U1 to bind to it. For this to happen, the U1 SNRP at the GU sequence along with the exon is looped back to form a loop structure. After this, U4 is released from this spliceosome complex, leaving now an active spliceosome assembly. This active spliceosome assembly comprises of U1, U2, U6 and U5. The active spliceosome complex now nicks the bond between the guanine residue of the 5-GU slide and exon 1. Exon 1 is then released and the guanine residue of the 5-GU splice site now bonds with the branch point adenine. After the branching, after the branch point adenine is bonded with the 5-GU sequence, exon 2 is cleaved after the 3-AG splice site and is then ligated to exon 1. This process is governed and regulated by the active spliceosome complex. The RNA intron that is now remaining out of the entire process takes the form of a lariat structure. The exons are now ligated together and can be sent for translation into a protein. The RNA intron which is now in the lariate structure is released for degradation and the SNRFs dissociate. This is how the GUAG type of introns are spliced from the pre-mRNA transcript to create a mature mRNA. This mature mRNA can now be sent or exported to the cytoplasm where it will be translated into a protein. This is all for today. If you have any other requests for a process, make sure you write them in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. See you again. Thank you.